on World News Tonight. Extreme measures. China struggles to contain the latest COVID explosion with the Beijing Olympics just three weeks away. Tonight, we look into how the country grapples to maintain a strict zero COVID culture. Medical breakthrough. The first ever pig to human heart transplant deemed successful and this milestone one day could help solve the chronic shortage of organ donations. Climate crisis. Monitoring services says the last seven years have been the warmest on record. Tonight, we see what has been contributing towards the rise in global warming. And illuminating the skies. Lapland sky turns green as the bright and colourful northern lights begin to dance. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with the rise in COVID-19 infections yet again. The city of Tianjin, located only 70 miles from Beijing, which is on high alert ahead of the Olympics, is under partial lockdown after the first local cases of the Omicron variant were found. In Xi'an, millions have been confined to their homes, relying on food drops and pleading online for help. All 14 million people in Tianjin being tested for the coronavirus. The city in partial lockdown after the first local cases of the Omicron variant were found here. 75,000 people quarantined. The worry that it'll get worse. The cluster in Tianjin is small compared to most cities in the world. But it's only 70 miles from Beijing, which is now on high alert with less than a month before the Winter Olympics. It's China's biggest COVID crisis since the first outbreak in Wuhan. In the city of Xi'an, millions have been confined to their homes because of 1,900 cases. They're locked down, relying on food drops and pleading online for help. Some unable to access medical care, including a pregnant woman who had a miscarriage outside a hospital because she didn't have a COVID test to get in. Igniting anger on social media here about the human cost of China's zero tolerance policy. In the coming months, um, it will be crucial, you know, that uh, for China uh, in terms of um, the effectiveness of this strategy. For Beijing's Olympics, thousands of athletes and officials will go directly into a tightly enforced bubble. But with the variant already spreading quickly in other countries, there is a race here to contain it before the games begin. Thousands in India are back at death's door as a massive increase in COVID infections have brought the country to breaking point. That steep surge has been exhausting medical resources in the country, with hospitals once again faced with oxygen shortages. This comes as precautionary jabs against the virus are being administered. For more on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Gathri Gunasekar, reported from Delhi in India. Gathri? Yes, Sanradi. The health minister's latest data showed India's COVID-19 tally rose over to 35 million as almost 180,000 new cases were registered during the past 24 hours. This is the fourth consecutive day when more than 1 lakh new cases were registered in a day in the country as many as 146 deaths due to the pandemic took over the total death toll over the mark of 4, uh, 4 lakh. The data also showed that India's Omicron tally has reached over 4,000 4, and now over 1,500 Omicron patients have been uh, discharged after recovery. Omicron has overtaken the Delta variant to be the domin dominant strain in the big cities such as New Delhi and Mumbai. India began to provide a booster shot to medical staff, frontline workers and the people over the age of 60 with underlying diseases as well as which the government calls a precaution dose. According to the statistic, about 67% of adults in India have been fully vaccinated. Nearly 5 lakh such doses have been administrated so far. This comes as the number of daily cases grew fivefold in eight days since the beginning of the new year. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Gathri Gunasekhar from Delhi in India. The COVID case numbers in the U.S. remain staggering, stretching the patience and the capacity to fix what COVID has already broken. From the millions forced to isolate at home to the emergency rooms and ICUs are desperately short on staff but filled with the sick, including the very young. 
COVID-19 hospitalizations in the U.S. reached the highest level of any other point in the pandemic as a surge in infections caused by the highly contagious Omicron variant strains healthcare systems. 132,646 people were hospitalized with COVID, surpassing the record of 132,051 set in January of last year. But this time is different. So now let's talk about the COVID numbers. Dr. Raul Sharma, emergency physician in chief at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center, says that unlike prior surges, only 50 percent of his hospital's COVID patients were admitted due to classic symptoms such as difficulty breathing, pneumonia, or low oxygen levels. The remaining 50 percent of these COVID hospitalizations are patients admitted for other causes, for example, heart attacks, strokes, abdominal pain, cancer, other infections, but who happen to incidentally test positive for COVID since everyone that's admitted to the hospital is tested for COVID. Now today, the fact that a large number of our COVID hospitalizations are incidental really reflects the level of community spread of Omicron. He added that half of those hospitalized with COVID at New York Presbyterian are vaccinated. And while his hospital is already stretched to capacity, the worst may be yet to come. We'll need to examine the numbers over the coming days, but we anticipate a peak in the next week or two. Across the country, hospitalizations have increased steadily since late December, doubling in the last three weeks, as Omicron quickly overtook Delta as the dominant version of the virus. Several states, as well as Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, have reported record hospitalizations. But there is some good news as Omicron appears to be potentially less severe than prior strains, as Dr. Sharma has seen in New York. About 10 percent of these COVID hospitalizations right now are in the ICU, and 5 percent are on ventilators. Now, as a point of comparison, this is a lower number than during the two prior surges. Deaths nationwide from COVID are averaging 1,700 per day, up from about 1,400 in recent days, but within levels seen earlier this winter. Despite multiple attempts at discussion, the two powerhouse nations of the U.S. and Russia have remained at odds when considering the chaotic atmosphere in Ukraine. Even after nearly eight hours of high-stake talks in Geneva, Washington pushed back on Moscow's demand, describing them as non-starters. But Russia vowed there would be no escalations of tensions with Kiev. Russia and the United States gave no sign that they had narrowed their differences on Ukraine and wider European security in talks in Geneva on Monday, as Moscow repeated demands that Washington says it cannot accept. Russia has gathered troops near Ukraine's border while demanding that the U.S.-led NATO alliance promise not to admit Ukraine or expand further into what Moscow sees as its backyard. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ribkov said there was a great disparity at the talks between the U.S. and Russia and that the two sides have almost opposite views on what needs to be done. State Department spokesman Ned Price said the U.S. was firm in pushing back security proposals that are non-starters for the United States. We will not, for example, allow anyone to slam close NATO's open door policy, which has always been central to the NATO alliance. We also will not forego bilateral cooperation with sovereign states that wish to work with the United States. Eight years after Russia seized the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine, Washington and Kiev say the 100,000 troops now near Ukraine's border could be preparing another invasion. Russia on Monday denied any such plans. The buildup of troops near Ukraine has raised U.S.-Russia tensions to their highest level since the end of the Cold War. Despite the lack of obvious progress in Monday's talks, the atmosphere between the two sides appeared cordial. Deputy U.S. Secretary of State Wendy Sherman called it a frank and forthright discussion, while her Russian counterpart said it was difficult but professional. New York officials have pledged to support all those affected in an apartment fire. It is the deadliest apartment fire in New York City in more than 30 years. Even Mayor Eric Adams called the incident a global tragedy. Now we have our Werner World News Special Correspondent Nicola Sanaratna from New York in the United States for more details. Nicola, what is the situation in New York City? 
Well, Anuradi, outside in the cold, some residents are still surviving the exterior damage of the blown out windows. New Yorkers are still trying to comprehend how this could happen. Nearby at the community center, people have been donating warm clothes and other supplies. The New York Fire Department has even set up the safety booth and is handling out smoke alarms. The nature of this sudden disaster and a large number of children to die has shaken everyone here. This is a city in mourning. The area of the Bronx where the fire occurred is home to a large Muslim community, immigrant population, and some of those affected by the blaze are believed to have originally come into the US from Gambia. At least 17 people died, including eight children. Several other people are in hospital in critical condition. A total of 63 people suffered injuries, including the 32 taken into hospital, a number who are in critical condition. Back to you, Anuradi. Thank you. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Nicholas N. Ratner from New York in the U.S. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More World News on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Kazakhstan's President Kasim Jomak Tokayev has described deadly violence last week as an attempted coup d'etat. He told leaders of a military alliance of ex-Soviet states the action had been coordinated by a single center, but did not name those responsible. The President of Kazakhstan has declared his country has weathered an attempted coup d'etat. In a speech to an online meeting of the Russian-led CSTO military alliance on Monday, President Kasim Yamat Tokayev said order had been restored after a week of violence, but that the hunt for terrorists was still ongoing. We prevented dangerous threats for the country's security. As part of the counter-terrorist mission, we are trying to identify people who committed these crimes. We detained around 8,000 people, and law enforcement officers and special departments are checking their involvement in terrorist acts, murders, looting and other crimes. Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed victory in defending Kazakhstan from what he described as a foreign-backed terrorist uprising. The measures taken by the CSTO have clearly shown we will not allow the situation to be rocked at home and we will not allow so-called colour revolutions to take place. Putin sent paratroopers last week to protect strategic facilities after anti-government protesters ransacked and torched public buildings. And approximately 1,400 Russian nationals were evacuated to Yekaterinburg on military planes, footage released by the Russian Ministry of Defense showed. Kazakhstan's biggest city, Almaty, returned to near normal on Monday after the worst violence the country has seen since the Soviet collapse 30 years ago. Shops and public transport reopened and the internet was switched back on for several hours for the first time since last Wednesday. Demonstrations were sparked by a New Year's Day fuel price hike before erupting into wider protests against the government and ex-leader Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Monday was declared a day of national mourning for those killed in the unrest. 16 members of the security forces were killed, while the number of civilian casualties is still being checked, the president said. According to a government social media post, Russian and state media have reported that 164 people had been killed. Health and police authorities have not confirmed that figure and the original social media post has been deleted. North Korea has followed up last week's ballistic missile test with yet another. The test coming just days after the previous, leading many leaders across the globe to believe the region may soon risk being destabilized due to this activity. North Korea fired what was believed to be a ballistic missile on Tuesday, the second within a span of days. It comes after leader Kim Jong-un threatened more military advances in a New Year's speech. The latest launch has already drawn fire from neighbors, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Under these circumstances, it's very regrettable that North Korea continues to launch missiles. And South Korea's National Security Council expressed strong regret at an emergency meeting, saying the repeated offense risked destabilizing the region. 
Officials added it's cooperating with U.S. allies to closely monitor the situation. The launch underscored Kim Jong-un's New Year promise to bolster the military as peace talks with South Korea and the U.S. have stalled. North Korea has said it is open to talk, but only if the U.S. and others drop hostile policies such as sanctions and military drills. U.N. Security Council resolutions ban North Korea from all ballistic missile and nuclear tests and have imposed sanctions over the programs. We have some good news for you. The University of Maryland saw a historic day in the field of medical science as doctors performed the world's first ever transplant of a genetically altered pig heart into a human, a medical first that could one day help solve the chronic shortage of organ donations. A very special delivery to the OR as a surgical team at the University of Maryland prepared for a major medical breakthrough. Over seven hours of operation, the doctors would perform the first ever heart transplant to a human from a genetically modified pig. The patient, a 57-year-old Maryland resident with terminal heart disease, whose poor underlying health had disqualified him from receiving a human organ. He had been kept alive for weeks on a heart and lung machine. The experimental procedure was granted a special dispensation by medical regulators as his last chance for survival. The animal that supplied the new heart had undergone genetic editing procedures to decrease the chances of rejection. Doctors are hoping the procedure will help to address a critical shortage of transplant organs. More than 100,000 people are currently waiting for an organ transplant in the U.S. alone. More than 6,000 of them die every year before getting their chance. The impending doom of a climate crisis may be upon us sooner than we would expect, as data revealed that 2021 was the fifth hottest year in the history of Earth's records. EU scientists also warned that the concentration of carbon dioxide and methane and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere reached a record high yet again. 2021 was the world's fifth hottest year on record. While levels of planet warming carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere hit new highs, that's according to European Union scientists. As already stated, the, the EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service, or C3S, said in a report that the last seven years were the world's warmest by a clear margin. And the global temperature last year was 1.1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius, above 1850 to 1900 levels. Freya Vanberg is a senior scientist at C3S. In a warming climate, we are expecting to see more and more frequent well, heat waves or, or more intense heat waves. And also there is already observ observational evidence that in Europe, due to the warming that's taken place already, heat waves have already become, uh, become more intense. Scientists say global levels of CO2 and methane, the main greenhouse gases, continue to climb and both hit record highs in 2021. After a temporary dip in 2020 at the onset of the global health crisis, provisional data suggest global CO2 emissions rebounded by 4.9% in 2021. C3S said extreme weather events that swept the world in 2021, from floods in Europe, China and South Sudan, to wildfires in Siberia and the United States, should be a stark reminder of the need to take decisive and effective steps towards a sustainable society. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The situation in France received attention when the politician of the ruling party was attacked by seaweed and had his mask ripped off when he was in the midst of attempting to speak to a group of displeased constituents. This is not the only incident of civilians acting out against state officials and the other office bearers. This is a clear indication of the growing frustration among the French nationals. Global drug makers say they'll soon have vaccines specifically for the Omicron variant. In an interview, Pfizer CEO Albert Bola said his company will have one ready by March. He said they're already making the vaccine and it'll protect not only against Omicron but also other existing variants. 
the Australian Border Force is investigating whether Novak Djokovic submitted a false travel declaration ahead of the arrival in Australia. Djokovic declared he had not travelled and would not do so in the 14 days leading to his arrival in Australia on Wednesday, January 5th, according to a travel declaration submitted as evidence to the court determining whether he would be allowed to remain in Australia. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed any of the stories we had tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other there in English. We're leaving you tonight with bright and colorful northern lights that appeared in the sky over Finnish Lapland, coloring the sky green. Thank you for joining us. Good night.